So we've covered looking at calculating maximum and minimum values when I give you a function and I limit the range of values. So I give you closed interval. What I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to set you a couple of questions on this. I want you to pause the video, have a crack at them, come back and check your answers. So here you go. I want you to calculate the maximum and minimum values of these three functions in the three sets of intervals I give you. So the first one is x squared minus 9 on the interval from negative 5 to 5. Second one is 5 minus 2x squared minus x cubed on the interval from negative 1 to 3. And the last one is x cubed bracket 6 minus x on the interval from negative 1 to 2. So pause the video and have a crack. So the first one, f of x equals x squared minus 9 on the interval from negative 5 to 5. Now remember what we said, there's three possible ways you can get the maximum or minimum values. One limit, the other limit, or the turning point. So I'm either going to get it here at negative 5, here at 5, or wherever the turning point is for this function. So the first thing we have to do is figure out where those turning points are. And to do that, we take the derivative. So f dash of x equals, well, x squared minus 9 just becomes 2x. And for the turning point, that equals 0. So if 2x is 0, x has to equal 0. So that's where my turning point's coordinate is in terms of x. So I've got three values where the maximum and minimum values could possibly occur. x is 0, x is negative 5, and x is 5. And in order to find the maximum and minimum values, we substitute in. So the first one I do is f of negative 5. If I do f of negative 5, I get negative 5 squared, take away 9. Negative 5 squared is 25, so it's 25 minus 9, which is 16. I then do f of 5. I do 5 squared, take away 9. Well, 5 squared minus 9 is 25 minus 9, which is 16. The last one I do is I then look at this one here, the x equals 0. And I look at f of 0, which gives me 0 squared take away 9, which is just negative 9. So from that, I can see my maximum and my minimum values. Now, my maximum here occurs at two points, but that all has to do with the symmetry of the curve. And x squared, remember, the curve does that. All right? And if you limit the, lim the range from one side to the other, and you make it the same on both sides, you're going to get a completely symmetric curve, so it's going to be at the same value there. I'd have been more worried if I didn't get that, to be honest. So what I can then do is say, therefore, my maximum value is equal to 16, and that occurs at x equal to negative 5 and 5, and my minimum value is equal to negative 9, and that occurs at my turning point when x equals 0. So there you go, we've got our maximum and minimum value for that. Job done. Next question was f of x equals 5 minus 2x squared, minus x cubed. Again, only three places it can occur. Start of the interval, end of the interval, turning points. So either at negative one, at three, or the turning points for this a curve. To get the turning points, same drill, we take the derivative. So f dash of x of this, derivative of ne five is zero, so we could just leave that. Derivative of negative two x squared gives me negative four x, and derivative of x cubed is three x squared. What I can then do is set it equal to 0 and solve it. So take out a common factor. If I take out negative x, I get negative x bracket 3x plus 4 equals 0. So from this, I get my two values. I get x equal to 0 or x equals negative 4 thirds. Now, the good thing I can do here is if I now compare this to my range, the lowest I can go is negative 1 and negative 4 thirds is lower than that, so I actually just discard this for my maximum or minimum values within my limit. I don't have to worry about this one. So I've now got three values where it can occur. Negative 1, 0, and 3. We have to figure it out, so we substitute in. So f of 3 equals 5, take away 2 times 3 squared, take away 3 cubed. So it's 5, 3 squared is 9, 2 of those is 18, so it's 5 minus 19, 3 cubed is minus 27. So 5 take away 18 is negative 13, take away 27 gives me negative 40. So that's the value of f of 3. 
I can then look at f of negative 1. Do I get 5 take away 2 times negative 1 squared take away negative 1 cubed? So I get 5 take away, well, it's 2 times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, so it's 5 minus 2. It's then take away negative 1 cubed. Well, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so minus minus gives you a plus. So it's 5 take away 2, which is 3 plus 1. That value is 4. Last one I then look at is a stationary point or the turning point, f equals 0. So I get 5 take away 2 times 0 squared take away 0 cubed. Well, 0 squared is nothing, so that disappears. And 0 cubed is 0, so my answer for that one is 5. So from that, I can read off my maximum minima. My minimum is here at negative 40, and my maximum is here at 5. We then have to communicate the answer. So we say our maximum, that equals 5, and that occurs at x equal to 0. And our minimum, that's negative 40, which we calculated first, and that occurs at x equal to 3. That's a key stage there. Remember, your final stage of communicating your answer is a key vital thing that you have to be able to do to make sure you get that final set of marks. Last question I said it was this one, f of x equals x cubed, bracket 6 minus x, from negative 1 to 2. Again, same idea. It's either at the lowest, the highest value on our range of values, or the turning points. Now, to get the turning point of this and take the derivative, first thing I'm going to do is actually multiply at the bracket. So I get 6x cubed, take away x to the 4. Then I could take the derivative of that. So I could take f dashed of x equals, or bring the power down, reduce it by 1, I get 18x squared, take away 4x cubed. And I know for the turning points, that equals 0. So now I have to factorise, well, if I look at these, I could take it x squared as a common factor, and 2, so I get 2x squared, bracket 9, take away 2x, and that equals 0. So now it's a case of just solving for both of these. Well, this first bit here gives me x equal to 0, the second bit here gives me x equal to 9 over 2. Again, look at the range of values. 9 over 2 is bigger than the 2, so it's bigger than our highest value. I can discard that in my calculations. I don't need to worry about that. So I've got three values to calculate. x equals 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals 2, and I get my highest and my lowest values from that. So f of 2, my top end, is 2 cubed, bracket 6, take away 2. Well, 2 cubed is 8, so it's going to be 8 times 6 minus 2, which is 4. 8 4s are 32. I've then got f of negative 1. So I've got negative 1 cubed, bracket 6, take away negative 1. Well, negative 1 cubed is just negative 1. That's going to be times 6 minus minus 1. The minus minus becomes a plus, so it's 7. So my lowest value there at this point is negative 7. When I substitute an x equals 0, let's see if we can get higher or lower than either of these. <coughs> f is 0 equals 0 cubed, bracket 6 minus 0. Well, that 0 times something, that answer is 0. So I've got my highest value there at 32, and my lowest is here at negative 7. Again, communicate it. My, answer, my maximum is 32, and that occurs at x equal to 2. And my minimum equals negative 7, and that occurs at x equal to negative 1. So I've got my two answers there. I've got where my maximum is, where my minimum is. That key stage at the end is something you have to make sure you can do. Communicate the answer clearly, tell them where the maximum is, where the minimum is, and where in your range of values it occurs.